Hey everyone, Michigan here. Welcome back to the channel and another random battle replay for you. And today I am in my Object 140 in a tier 10 game here on the south side of Redshire. And this game is going to demonstrate a lot of cool positions that I'm able to use in Clan Wars and advances that I decided to try out in random battles to decent success, as you'll see, given that I am posting this video. So to start off, I'm going to dodge this Grill 15 and head over to the 9-0 line. And it looks like our team is going to have a pretty solid deployment to start. We have a couple of tanks going towards the castle. Not many, but we have a Udez and a Grill overwatching. We have a couple of mediums going to the center. And then our TDs are going to sit in the back. And a good amount of heavies and mediums are going to head to the 9-0. I do really feel like you need to win the blimp on this map to progress this game. Otherwise, you end up getting very boxed in. Especially since you can't take the one line without really taking the Charlie 4 area. So to start, I'm going to head up high side, which is a little risky, especially with this many TDs. But we're going to get a early shot off on that Batchat. Hitting him, just high rolling for 17. Um, 337 damage total. We're going to look for some of these heavies crossing. Again, a little dicey there. I think this E5 lights me. Looking for the Capola, not going to quite get it. The Capola, the E5, is a little bit tougher than I would think. Actually, a fellow class member there from Class A, Wild E. Coyote. A salute to you. As I didn't actually notice until just now who it was. So I am going to take a hit from the M48 Patton. Not the greatest start there. Just one shot taken, one shot dealt. Now we're going to look for this Manticore. Looking for a little bit of a shot there. Going to swing one over. If the Manticore did pull forward, that should have hit. But we won't have any way of knowing until after the match is over. Grill 15 is pretty high side. Looks like he didn't know he was lit. Got a lucky shot there into him. Low rolling for 274, putting us up to just a touch over 600 damage this game. But there is plenty more damage to be had in this battle. Now, I really like the 140, and I'm starting to like it over the 907 now, mainly because of the gun depression. The armor isn't nearly as good, but having this extra couple of degrees is fantastic. Looking for the 140 there, not going to, or sorry, the EBR there, not quite going to get a hit off of him. Our 705A gets the first kill of the game there against our fellow clan mate there in the E5. And now we are going to head south and try and play this ridge line to dig out this tier 9 and tier 10 heavy, respectively. Actually, both are tier 10 heavies, as this is an all tier 10 game. Excuse me, I thought that was an M450. And this is where we're going to be able to showcase the various types of ammunition. We started off firing APCR, and we're still shooting APCR, but against the turret of an E100, we are going to have to shoot here. We're going to just take a punt at that E100 there at the APCR, and I think at some point here I am going to swap to heat. Now this AMX is giving us the side of his turret, but as soon as he turns it towards us, it's not going to work, and we are going to go right through the E100. Now this is about a 50-50 to go through, probably even a little bit less. Now I am getting some green there, mainly because the E100 is facing right at me, but that's mainly in the center of, the center of the cheeks of his turret. The top part seems to be a little bit as a little bit more angled as it slopes back. And right now, my main issue is I actually have to hit the E100 to be able to go through him. See the green there? You know, not entirely going through. I think that one hit the gun mantlet. There is the bar on the top of his tank, but as he's kind of holed down a little bit and his turret is sloped up a touch, we are not going to get a pen there. But we do get a pen on that one for 333, bringing the E100 down to a one shot. And all we need is just one more shot. There we go. We're going to get it for our first kill of the game against the E100. Now we're going to look for this AMX M4. He's wiggling his turret like crazy, trying to defend against both the Badger and myself. But he's going to have to pick one eventually. He picks the Badger, and that means we're going to have three shots into the side of his turret. You can see I've swapped back to APCR. No need to shoot heat there. And with his turret going around, we were going to take a shot, but instead we will bide our time, be patient, make sure that we get a shot that actually goes through, and that patience is going to give us our second kill of the game. Now, just shy of 3,000 damage, 533 assists, we are going to move on to the third phase of this battle. We're, we're going to make a very aggressive play underneath. But first, a quick pit stop 
against this M48 Pat who put one in before us. He's going to light us. We're going to get a little bit of assistance. Close, but no cigar on hitting him. But that is all right. We have backed him down off the ridge. Now, in order for me to make this play, I'm trying to get up to the inside of that hill where the enemy team is playing there opposite us. But I need those tanks to actually go down because if we get lit doing that, it will be quite difficult for us to actually survive it as we're going to be driving through an open field. Luckily, our teammates on the right side of the map, on the 8-9 line, have distracted the enemy tanks, and now we're going to stop in the open field. A little bit risky, but we're not going to get lit, and we're going to look to get one against the JP-100. Two very sneaky shots there into his lower plate with APCR. I would have preferred to be shooting heat there, but... You know, all the fences in the way, and I really didn't feel like I had time. We're going to stop again to take some shots at this 268 version 4. Getting one solid shot in, the 268 version 4 is going to pull off. And now we're going to look for this 100. Wow, that was a 450 meter shot into the cupola of the JP while moving. I was super surprised that one went where I wanted it to. But I'm not going to complain, that's kill number 3. Now we're going to move against this IS-4, and this is where some of the weakness of the 140 is going to come into play here. Heavily armored tanks at long distance is not this tank's strong suit. And while it does show some orange here, it's probably more like a 25% chance. Now, we are going to do a whole lot of tracking here, and we're going to burn a whole lot of ammo. But eventually, this IS-4 has to fall for us to be able to push the 1-2 line. We can't have this guy here, so I feel like I'm in a good position to, to try and take him out. We are just going to keep shooting until we can we can get him. First shell goes in there, 1 out of 5 against that IS-4 for 319, going right into his side. And at some point here, I'm going to swap to heat. There we go. Now you can see it's much greener on his lower plate. We have more heat than we have APCR. There we go. There's one shot into the lower plate of the IS-4. He is still angling, but... That is not going to stop him from getting penned by a second shell. And fortunately, that one goes a little high. Again, we really need to be hitting the lower plate. And with him moving back and forth across this bridge, it does make it just a little bit more difficult. 145 alpha left on him. Looking for that lower plate. That one goes low into the rock or into the dirt there. A lot of shells coming at this IS-4. It's a very well-armored tank. He juked me a little bit there. Glances off of his upper plate. No pen on that one. That one goes into his track, still looking for that lower plate. He's going to take a shot at me. Again, going into his track, but luckily the 907 is going to finish him off. Now, I'm going to be looking for this E4. I've swapped back to APCR. I can go right through the cupola. I'm going to take a hit from the grill. I'm okay with it. I know the grill probably isn't going to poke again, so I'm willing to just sit out here and take shots against this E4. I know that even if that grill does hit me, he has about a 40% chance to actually kill me with this shot, and the game's almost over, so I'm willing to sacrifice you know, another 750 alpha. Still putting one more into that E4 needed. I'm down to three heat rounds and five APCR rounds. So we're going to start looking for this Patton. Are we going to get a shot into him? Right into the back of his turret there. We don't actually kill him. The grill gets him, and now we're going to swap to HE rounds against this grill. I am the fastest tank left on this team, so I should be able to outrun this 430U and get a shot into the grill. Now, my plan is to just hit him as hard as I can, and we are going to get a nice HE, well, actually not a nice HE round, but we are going to ram him, losing our tank 480, but we are going to, sorry, we're going to deal 480, and we're going to actually take 135 plus the 646, so we will die, but we do finish here with 700, or 7,400 31 alpha or damage sorry i am all over the place and 2500 assist let's take a look at the post game all right so we finish with a mastery badge not the easiest thing to achieve in an object 140 we got a spotter bruiser fire for effect and a high caliber for causing 20 percent of the total damage done to the enemy team we finished top on our team on XP, 1,376 base XP, our three kills also leading the team, and our damage, 7,431. Looks like we didn't actually hit that shot on the mana core, so that's all we'll get, but I'm not complaining there. We fired 44 rounds this game, nearly running out of ammunition. Out of the 44 we fired, 37 
hit and 22 penned. Again, a lot of those were against that E100 and IS-4, two very heavily armored vehicles where volume of fire uh, is as important as just penning those shots as well. We spent 115,000 rounds or 115,000 silver and ammunition. A lot of heat rounds were slung against that IS-4 and the E-100 again, but we still made out with 38,000 credits as the total amount for the battle was a touch over 200k. Which meant this game was slightly profitable, but you'd have to get 7,000 every time. Uh, we had our 1,376 base XP. After all of our bonuses, a whopping 13,000 416 XP and 832 free XP. This was a super awesome game. Again, in my series of 11 games where I actually hit a personal daily win 8 record of, I think, 3,200 for 11 games, all at tier 10, and through about seven different vehicles. So this is the last one I'm recording in that series, and I guess I have to go and play the game again to get more content for you. Or feel free to send some replays my way, as I love to record other people's replays, arguably a little more than I like to re-watch my own. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.